Hello, hello, folks. Just want to see uh, if you can see our screen. 16 innovative ways to boost repeat sales. If you can hear us okay, please go to the questions box and say, hey, Nick, we can hear you. We can see you. You see that screen? Perfect, perfect. Awesome. Um, let's do some sound check first for, uh, we'll, we'll do this, we'll go Blake and I'm gonna do mouse here at the same time. So um, you now have, you should have mouse share. Hello, you, hello. You got it. I can already tell. Awesome. Awesome. And you sound great. Can everyone hear Blake okay? I hear Blake. Hope so. I hope everyone yeah. can hear me. I hope I'm not doing the whole thing and just on mute. That would be, I can mind yeah. it. <laughs> That's great. Now let's do a keyboard and mouse for you as well. You oh. got it. Got Fantastic. It. And sound check, please. And I'm here. Yeah, you sound great. Super. <clears throat> okay, folks. Moment of truth, if this is the first time you're joining an exclusive webinar, then you must join us in the age-old tradition. If it's the first time, you just go to the questions box, then you introduce yourself. What's your name? What company are you coming in from? And uh, you can you know, make a promise to yourself to come to every one of our webinars every two weeks. From now on, we'd love to have you. But for now, I just want to know who you are and say hello get a better sense of who we're presenting to and what it means to you. Got Taylor from Orchard Corset. Sounds awesome. Hi, Taylor. Danielle, uh, working freelance, mostly in Clavio. Not a bad gig. Uh, Vitor from Brazil. Uh, Vitor, how are you? Alec from Fluency Firm. Hello, Alec. It's a cool crowd today. Oh, by the way, you guys will be wondering in one minute, are we going to get started? We're not. We're going to get started at 2.02 because there's going to be about two to three times as many people in here in the next two minutes as there are right now because everyone is screaming at their browsers right now and wondering why GoToWebinar is still being utilized in 2022. We got Jeff from South Carolina at Quipley. Hello, Jeff. Somebody has to keep GoToWebinar in business. Yeah, someone. Yeah, I think it's quite literally me. I think everyone on our team is using Zoom except for me. But that's cool. Loyalty. That's the, that's what we're talking about today. I'm loyal to go to Um Who else is here for the first time? We uh, we already heard from Taylor, Danielle, Vitor, Alec, and Jeff. Anyone else here joining an exclusive webinar for the first time? Wondering who these people are that are presenting. So you got, we got a great group here, Wonderman, Clavio, exclusive. It doesn't get better than this for one hour. Richard said me. Hey, Richard. I, 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 I don't know where you're dialing in from, but it's great to have you. And uh, folks, the number of people signing in right now is, is uh, scoring really quick. Uh, so we're going to give everyone just a few more moments and thanks for waiting and that way everyone gets all the good content together. Got Brittany, new from Cleveland, Ohio. Awesome. Hey, I'm in Columbus. Oh, hi. Um, is, uh, Richard, Brittany, what, what companies are you dialing in from? House of Bee Jewels, oh, so cool. Everyone's got cool names these days. Miss those days of, you know, Walmart, Staples, so creative. Panoptic Design, Richard, awesome. Should be proud of these names. Now I feel bad if someone actually does have a boring name like Exclusive Concepts, they're not gonna say what their name is anymore. Um, Let's see, we've got just a few moments left. 
but we've got a lot of people in here already. We don't want to make people wait too much. Why don't we start to dive in? Folks, if there's any audio, video issues at any point, oh, as I say that, Danielle says, oh, I seem to have lost audio. Can everyone else hear? I think everyone. Oh, and it's back. Got Priscilla from New York City, founder of Skinergy Beauty. All right. That sounds great. Uh, it's 2.02. Let's get started, everyone. So um, we've just broken this out into three parts. We've got 16 innovative ways to boost repeat sales. We split it out in five ways from the Wonderman team, five from Clavio, and five from Exclusive. And all three of us are going to chime in on that, that number 16 golden one. Uh, we're going to get this done within under 60 minutes with a little bit of time for QA. So uh, with that, we get started. It's all you, Blake. Awesome. Let me see if I got screen access. Perfect. All right, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Blake and Pearl. I had merchant enablement over at Wonderment. Previously, I was at an SMS platform called Attentive, which you might have heard of before. But most of my background has actually been spent in D2C e-commerce. Um, I spent a lot of time building and scaling retention marketing programs for D2C brands. Now I'm just focused on teaching others how to create those awesome experiences over owned channels. So there's two things I want you to learn from my uh, talk today, which is one, the power of transactional communication and what it means for repeat purchases. And then also secondly, what are some engaging ways that we can deliver those experiences post-purchase that can lead to organic repeat sales? A little bit about Wonderment, who we are, if you're not familiar, uh, we're an industry leader in post-purchase experiences, and we're really focused on just reinventing transactional communication for both consumers and our merchants. Our platform helps everyone from entrepreneurs through enterprises to really own their transactional experience like never before to drive repeat business. We work with almost 300 leading brands at this point, including Feastables, Igloo, Jones Road Beauty, and Ridge Wallet, just to name a few of our awesome customers. So I want to start off with something that you might have never heard someone say before, which is transactional communication is a retention marketing growth lever. I'm going to show you why this is true, and then I'm going to also give you some tactical tips that we can put into action today to really accelerate that. And my first tip is just to own your transactional emails. If you're not familiar with what transactional messages are in general, these are the things that get sent out right after a customer makes a purchase, and they're directly related to their order. You might be sending a few of these through a platform like Shopify today, so that could be like an order confirmation email, uh, maybe shipping uh, a package out for delivery or delivered, things like that. And you might be surprised to learn that customers are actually engaging with these emails a lot more than even marketing emails at times. In fact, on average, transactional email can see average open rates of about 60 to 80% and click-through rates of about 10 to 20%, uh, meaning that these can be up to 10 times more effective at driving a visitor back to your site post-purchase than a traditional marketing campaign. And all of this traffic is highly qualified, high intent website visits, solving one of the biggest problems that marketers often have, which is just driving traffic back to the site post-purchase. As you can see here too, these emails can drive revenue. Uh, there's a few reasons why this is true. We'll dive into that today. But here's some data from a Wonderman customer who's actually built their transactional emails inside of Klaviyo using Wonderman data. So not only are they driving significant engagement, but they're driving monthly five-figure revenue from these emails. What would you do if you could be driving this much revenue from transactional emails into your business every month? And as seen by the stats that we just took a look at, you can see that these are really engaged emails, but with Shopify's out of the box templates, you're really unable to measure performance and then also easily customize these. And this is why a lot of merchants will actually prefer to build these inside of Klaviyo and then leverage that wonderment data to really power the whole experience. On the left, we can see like what I would call a vanilla Shopify transactional email. Nothing wrong with it, but you look at the right and contrast that and really see why a lot of people would prefer to leverage the power of Flavio and Wonderman to really build out those emails. They're branded and they really drive a lot of engagement. Another example here from two brands that work with Ourobora and Ruggable, really conveying the same message. And I, I, would, I would guess to say if you had to pick which one you would want your brand to be sending, it'd be the one on the right and not the one on the left. But how do these emails actually drive revenue? Well, let's take a look at that now. And really, this all comes down to owning your order tracking page experience. The average consumer checks their order tracking page about four to five times on average, depending upon the brand. And this can really make your order tracking page one of the most traffic pages on your entire website. And usually this traffic goes to something like this, a DHL, a FedEx, USPS uh, website, and not your own actual website. 
This is disconnected oftentimes. It can frustrate a customer. And ultimately, all those engagement stats that we just saw, you're sending that to a carrier and not your own website, which can be a lot of lost revenue when you really look at this. And to contrast that, really, we solve this problem here at Wonderment. We're really aiming to solve this problem, I should say, by giving consumers or merchants the control of that tracking page experience again so that it natively lives on your website and that it links to from every single transactional message that you're sending out. These pages can be created without code, yet they really look and feel on brand and help you own that experience. I think of this as the glue that really brings together that transactional experience to drive repeat sales. As you can see, the ROI and the conversion rate stats really speak to that narrative as well. And we often see customers even placing a second order before a first even arrives, just because they're utilizing these tracking pages. It's a great way to soft sell and introduce new things to a customer without really being spammy or promotional in nature. So let's take a quick look at a few of the things that really make these so effective. These are some examples from customers who work with DuraDry and Kapari. And you can see these pages display order information with a tracking block, some FAQs that get helpful information. And then also they can introduce new products with this upsell and cross sell block. So this is a really bare bones example of what a branded tracking page can look like, but it really, really speaks volumes when you look at the difference here. Sorry, go back one. Oh, I think I lost, I can go back. Is there a way to go back here? One more slide. Perfect, thank you. So you can really see the difference here between DHL, that conventional, what we might have been used to, and then owning that tracking page experience and really seeing you know, a lot of brands opting for this experience, and this is exactly why. So I've kind of shown you, um, you know, just bare bones what tracking pages can be, but my third tip is actually just to take the tracking page even further to really help to drive a lot of great behaviors with consumers. And we can see one of the other superpowers of tracking pages is that they help increase awareness of other parts of your business. So you could display ways to reorder, maybe educate or onboard your customers and eliminate buyer's remorse, uh, get them to opt into that SMS, that loyalty, that referral program that you might've just launched up, um, even drawing visibility of things like subscription offerings. This is highly traffic real estate that you can optimize and own and really control that narrative. Here's a few more examples from some customers who are using branded tracking pages. My favorite is the one on the upper left. It's pop-up leather, and they're using a quiz on their tracking page to get more zero-party data. So they're not going for a sale immediately, but they want to learn more about the customer, and then they'll use that data intelligently to then retarget or remarket to the customer downstream. Really great way to draw a lot of eyeballs to your, uh, to your different offerings that you might be having on this tracking page. So I've talked a lot about the good of transactional. Now let's talk about some things that maybe are out of the control of a merchant, which is things like shipping delays. These are some of the worst nightmares of e-commerce merchants. And oftentimes we wonder, do we tell the customer, do we sweep it under the rug and hope they don't write in? Well, I think it's actually a golden opportunity to really engage and build trust. In fact, I read a stat recently, I think it was like 59% of consumers say that they wouldn't come back to a brand after having a negative customer experience. So if you don't communicate delays, chances are when they write in, they're not gonna be happy and it's gonna be a difficult situation for you to deal with. But what we can do is actually use automation to really lead with empathy and take a proactive approach to resolving that situation. So this is Eli Weiss. He's the head of customer experience over at Jones Road Beauty. They're a Wonderman customer and also Jones Road's a seriously awesome B2C brand if you're looking for best practices, highly recommend you check them out. But Eli is one of many customers that we've helped to really turn what is typically a negative experience in shipping delays and turn it into a positive moment for their customers. And what Eli did was use Wonderman data to trigger an email through Klaviyo to send a notification when a package had been delayed or not updated by the carrier over a predetermined time frame. So let's say it's 72 hours without an update from the carrier. And so what these emails were able to do is not only drive strong engagement and deflect CS tickets, but they actually drove revenue for Jones Road. And we do this for a lot of customers too by helping to build trust and loyalty with their customers. We can't always control shipping and logistics, but we definitely can control what and how we communicate with our customers. So we actually have a lot of triggers that we can implement into Klaviyo for different shipping delay situations. So for example, package delays, or maybe you offer expedited shipping, but maybe USPS didn't actually execute on that expedited shipping. We can set up automation around that, or even things like an attempted delivery failure. And all of these emails are really helping to mitigate CS tickets. We're seeing about a 40% reduction as a result of implementing these and really building better customer experiences and loyalty. These are just a few examples of what brands are doing to communicate this. The key with each of these is they're communicating the issue, they're letting the customer know they're on top of it, and then they're telling them what's gonna happen next. So I think if you choose to lead with empathy, like Jones wrote in all these examples, 
you'll find your customers are going to gain trust with you and remember that you really went above and beyond the value of that experience and then they might come back and buy again as a result just of you really leading with that empathy i say the best tip for last this is my favorite and it's setting up transactional sms this is where we're seeing some of the highest engagement and revenue and something you should really consider adding from day one over 97 percent of consumers that were surveyed want to receive order updates via sms making this a huge opportunity for you to invest in and these can take as little as an hour to set up using wonderment in an sms platform like Clavio, for example and you can see the engagement stats speak for themselves. You know, we're seeing about 50 to 75% click-through rates on average, making this a gold mine for driving all that traffic back to your tracking page that we just talked about. Even the best SMS campaigns might see five to 10% click-through rates, making this you know, up to 10 to 15X potential engagement increase on these transactional SMSs. This is a CPG brand that we work with. They're absolutely crushing on transactional SMS right now. Over the last 30 days, they've driven almost 50 grand from repeat sales through transactional SMS. And this really demonstrates the effectiveness that we can have by using transactional SMS and linking to that tracking page experience. And these texts can span the entire transactional life cycle. So this is just four examples of what I call your core four, like confirmed, created, app for delivery, and actually delivered. But we can use a lot more triggers if you wanna even serve some of those delay use cases as well. Here's an example, just kind of how it all comes together. This is CalPAC. And they send a text once that order has actually been shipped. You can see they click on the link, then they go to that tracking page, and then really they can take action based upon what's on that tracking page. But this text is leading with a lot of value. Same thing here too with Igloo. Uh, really similar example, out for delivery today, building that excitement and hype. The customer goes, checks out the tracking page, sees where their order's at, and then maybe browses around as well. The key with all these SMSs is that you're really taking a channel that already has high engagement affinity, and you're linking back to that tracking page, but you're also giving them really what they want and increasing that dopamine by giving them, you know, that update on the order. And when you combine transactional text in your SMS strategy, it really can help to actually add a lot of value to the channel as well. So wrapping it up, the last thing I think worth noting about transactional SMS, uh, it's a naturally two-way conversational channel. And you can think of your transactional text as conversational starters with your customers to really invite that conversation during that arrival journey. So you could add something as simple as text me if you have any questions to your SMSs, and it's leaving those breadcrumbs that if they have any concerns or they wanna reach out, they can start that conversation and really build that relationship through that transactional text. So it's a great way to kind of jump off and have that organic conversation, break down the barrier, and really kind of build some of that relationship over time. So that's all I've got time for today, but I hope that you really consider investing your transactional experience as it is a retention marketing growth lever. Um, and if you want to get in touch with us or anything we talked about today, we're pleased to offer everyone here a free month of wonderment so you can really get up and running to deliver those better experiences um, that drive engagement and repeat purchases. So you can shoot me an email, Blake at wonderment.cc, or just visit us at wonderment.com slash demo. We can get in touch there. I'm um, happy to be a resource for you, whether or not you decide to, to use us today or, or any time in the future. But uh, yeah, really appreciate the time, everyone, and hope to hear from you soon. Awesome. So we have a, a quick poll for everyone uh, that we're going to launch on behalf of Wonderment. Um, how should Wonderment reach out to you? And just launching that now. Okay. So Blake, you want to talk a little bit about the offers? Yeah, sure. So we are offering two things. So um, definitely we can offer a free month of one for you to get up and running, kind of learn more about the platform and how we help brands grow through transactional. Um, so we'd love again to call and learn more about your brand and kind of be able to kind of create that personalized plan of action for transactional. And then additionally, you know, we, if you just want to take a look and audit at what you're doing today on transactional, we're happy to get on the call. Um, and just chat through what your problems are, how we can help solve for some of those things and really connect um, that journey as well. So two different offers, um, but really aimed at just helping you to maximize your transactional engagement um, and really create that customer experience that's gonna help you to drive those repeat purchases. Awesome, so I'm gonna close this out in three, two, one. And thank you folks for, for doing that. Roughly half of you have asked for, for some outreach from Wonderment. So uh, I'm excited we'll help coordinate that after we're done with this presentation.
Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Blake. Oh, you are up. All right. Let's see. Can I do this? I got it. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about owned media, which might sound like a term you've never heard before. Um, but by the end of this, you absolutely will. Let's see, how do I, there we go. Okay, so a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Val Geisler. I lead customer advocacy at Klaviyo. Um, before I was at Klaviyo, I was an email marketing consultant for both B2B and B2C brands. So I worked with, if you run a brand, I worked with people just like you. Uh, and I worked in Klaviyo a lot and I worked with a lot of other brands um, and, and uh, tech partners as well. So um, I am very interested in creating a really powerful connection between customers and, uh, and brands. And actually, when I was a consultant, I wrote a, a whole um, downloadable blog post it's on my website, if you want to go find it, uh, about transactional emails so and how powerful they are. And they are the unsung hero of uh, email marketing. So uh, definitely uh, taking a lot of notes when Blake was talking, that's for sure. Okay, so a few things that we're going to cover today. Again, I have five more tips for you. Um, so using segmentation and flows to create an automated support system for your team and for your customers. Uh, talking to your customers is very important. One of my favorite things to discuss. Uh, helping your customers build habits, how to build habits, and that's part of repeat purchases. Sending a customized post-purchase flow. Um, and then the post-purchase, what that is, pre-arrival and post-arrival are two different experiences and a lot of people um, lump them in together. So I'm gonna show you an idea about how to uh, switch that up and you can actually go and implement that today. Okay, so uh, this is a, a fun phrase we have around Clavio, less stalking and more talking. Segmentation is the best way to communicate with your customers with in ways that matter to them. So you're going to, by segmenting your audience, that, so let's say uh, something as simple as people who love red and people who love blue, and you have red shirts and blue shirts for sale, you can segment the audience so that people who love red only ever hear about your different styles of shirts in red, and people who love blue can hear about the blue offerings in your products. Uh, that that is a very simplified version of segmentation, um, but segmentation is how you help customers feel like they are seen and heard by your brand. And honestly, as human beings, isn't that all we want is to feel seen and heard? Why wouldn't we do it in email and SMS marketing? So there. Because of uh, customer segmentation, it's really important to just know like there is no one size fits all customer journey. Um, you pr probably are on many email lists. If you uh, sign up for other products, if you've made purchases over the years, uh, you are on email lists and everyone else on that email list is nothing like you. It's just kind of wild to think about. Um, you know, your social media feed is not anyone else's social media feed. Um, it's every every single person is going to have at least some variation and segmentation allows you ways to group certain types of customers together so that well you're not doing this like exact one to one um, it it is a version of one to many but maybe that many is a bit smaller right uh, so and, and segmentation does change the game for a lot of brands um, we have a brand called Prusy who utilizes Klaviyo. They started segmenting and actually send less emails and make more money um, by segmenting down to what their customers are interested in, what they had shown uh, by purchases in the past. So um, you, some basic segmentation to think about. New product purchasers, so those are your brand new first time buyers. Uh, inactive or unengaged subscribers, people who haven't been uh, interacting with your emails in the last, say, six months, that time frame is going to change for everyone, but it's a good a benchmark. Um, your VIP customers, these are people who love you, who buy from you all the time, who uh, interact with all of your content, who are part of your Facebook group community. So you know who your VIPs are, so put them in a the segment as well. Um, and then people who are those like pre VIP. So these are customers who are trending toward that direction. Maybe they've bought from you three or four times. Maybe they have left a review. Maybe they are part of your affiliate or referral program. Um, there are lots of these kind of leading indicators that they're VIPs and you can start to treat them like that. 
Okay, so support that goes beyond your customer success team. Um, no matter how big or how small you are, uh, any every single company needs help in customer success. So Blake gave some examples earlier of how you can reduce support tickets through proper uh, transactional emails and giving the right information at the right time. Um, this is another uh, way to bolster your CS team. Your CS team will be really happy to not get lots of uh, back and forth. Um, and that is to do this really deep segmentation is the answer, right? So I'm going to talk about segmentation a lot. Um, segmentation based on your customer's feedback. So this will require some alignment with your CS team. And if you are a brand owner, operator, uh, you know, do it all in one place, you can just have a little alignment conversation with yourself. You might have to go over to your CS team though and talk to them and say, hey, listen, we wanna hear, so this is an example of an email where this uh, a customer had indicated that they were interested in a particular type of product. Um, so you might get requests from customers Hey, I'd really like to know when you have the rose scent available. Um, great. We're going to tag that in our CS system, whatever system that is. It can be, I mean, if you're operating through Gmail for your support tickets, you can use Gmail tags if you need to. But then you use those tags to create segments so that when you launch your rose scent for your candles, um, you go back to those customers who specifically requested that scent and say, hey, you made this request, we heard you, we made it, and it's available now. And you can have that tight segment of customers who specifically requested that particular product, that color, that scent, that whatever, and uh, reach out to them. And you can even give them a year the first to know. We want to let you know 12 hours before anyone else does, so you have a chance to grab it before it's sold out. Um, right, so you can create this sense of excitement and sense of urgency in your tighter segments because you're speaking directly to something that they have asked for. Um, and yes, you're going to start to notice patterns as you go through this process of creating tags for customer requests. Um, and you'll be able to also help predict what kind of products you are going to launch when you see massive requests. Uh, for certain types of product or colors or et cetera. Um, it'll help inform your product decisions. And then you'll be making really smart buying choices as a brand operator, because you're basically making a decision to fill a gap that has already been identified by your customers. And then all you have to do is email those customers who asked for it, and then they come by it. It's magic. Uh, obviously, the more data that you have, the more you can segment. You can talk to your customers anytime. You don't have to wait for them to write in. You can send out surveys uh, using a survey tool. You can also send surveys through clicking an email. So you can ask people to click one link or the other to do a survey. Um, you can send surveys in SMS um, with uh, keyword replies. There's all kinds of ways that you can proactively gather information from your customers. Definitely respond to those who are writing in and asking, but then think of ways that you can also reach out and make the same request so that you can um, gather that data and on the back end be able to go back to those customers um, down the line when you do build that product. I will tell you, there's no more powerful language in the world than you asked and we heard you and so we made it. Like that is so incredibly powerful as a customer to say, wow, you really listened to my request and you came back and found me. And I'm not just in a big list of like, oh, I might see this marketing email. Um, you came and found me directly and that feels really special. So talking to your customers, we kind of just touched on that with surveying, um, you know, finding ways to engage with your customers, ask them specific questions, but uh, you know, you can do it in lots of different ways. You get this baseline segmentation. This is actually a opt-in form that Cheeky uses here where they are asking um, about specific interests. So when a customer, or a pr prospective customer is putting in their email address, they're also choosing what they're interested in. Um, that way they get tagged in the back end in Klaviyo and Cheeky is able to send segmented messaging based off of these answers. Um, there is also an opportunity to, in an email down the road, let's say in a welcome flow or an onboarding flow, you know, a, 
a way to go back and if they didn't answer these questions, if there are no tags on the account, you could send these same questions out in an email and ask them to fill this out. So quizzes and on-site forms are great ways to collect information. Um, I'm also going to encourage you to actually call your customers. Uh, so send, get out of your Clayview account, go into your Gmail, send one-to-one -one emails to your customers and say, hey, I'd love to spend 20 minutes on the phone with you if you'd give me that time and talk to your customers, interview them, get to know them, um, ask them what matters the most to them in the world, ask them what problems they're trying to solve right now in relationship to your product. And you get really good customer data, you get exact words that your customers use. Um, when I was an email consultant, I did this for my clients. I would go and talk to their customers and then we would take entire sentences that customers said to us in those interviews and put them in email subject lines and in body copy and in button copy. and they, their customers would actually write to them and say, it feels like you took the words right out of my mouth. And it was like, yeah, because we did. Actually, those were your words that we just spit back out at you. Um, so talking to your customers is incredibly powerful. Um, if you are interested in talking to customers and want to know more, um, I'll give you my contact information uh, towards the end here. And we, you can connect with me. I'll send you some resources on how to do those interviews. Um, but uh, I'm very interested, if, but I will send you those resources if you commit to interviewing one customer a week for four weeks straight, and then come back and tell me how it went. Um, I guarantee with those four conversations, it'll change the way you think about your marketing. Okay, so building habits. We're talking about getting those repeat purchases, right? Repeat means we're doing it over and over again, which typically involves having a habit built in. Um, so Bloomtopia is the rewards portal for this company called Bloom. Um, so uh, habits are being built in Bloom through their customers by uh, rewards. So uh, when their customers are buying over and over again, which means they've built the habit into their daily life of using Bloom products. So Bloom is skincare, I'll tell you that. Uh, so uh, they have skincare products. If you're using their products over and over again, making multiple purchases, referring friends, um, they have this reward program. And it's not just a link inside of your uh, dashboard as a subscriber. It is an entire program. And I did this GIF so you could see the whole thing. And you can actually go to Bloom's website and click on Bloomtopia. It's right there in the header. Um, anyone can see this whole program. But uh, it is a program. It's a, and they have a community involved. You earn points for activities. You earn rewards for those activities. Um, you get to be a part of something bigger than just being a customer. Um, even just giving it a name, calling it Bloomtopia makes it feel really special. Uh, so think of ways that you can reward your customers for building the habit of using your product into their daily life. Uh, and then again, this is a place where you can segment. So Bloom, Bloom has a whole segment of customers who are part of Bloomtopia um, and they get to uh, engage with those customers in a very unique way that they don't uh, have that kind of messaging to the rest of their customers. So you have like your invite into Bloomtopia, but then you have a whole other segment of customers who are in Bloomtopia and you can um, speak directly to them. Again, that segmentation is so very powerful. Send a customized post-purchase flow. Okay, so this was uh, whenever I would, uh, audit uh, Klaviyo accounts and I still, when I get into Klaviyo accounts, I see this happen a lot. Um, having post-purchase flows that are specific to that customer's needs and the products are really important. Um, so this is, if we're talking about repeat customers. So customizing your post-purchase flow for your repeat customers is, it's like the tiniest little thing that you can do that makes a huge difference. So this is one of our customers, Propello Life. Uh, they make fitness supplements, uh, protein shakes and those kinds of things. And um, this is the exact same email that a first time purchaser gets with one exception. If you can see it well enough on my screen, it's kind of small print, but it says, thank you for trusting us with your business more than once. That change, and I think that the subject line is like, uh, thank you again, or something like that. That one little word 
um, that more than once, those slight changes in copy recognize for the customer, oh, you know I've shopped with you more than one time. This is not the same email I got uh, the first time I bought with you. You're recognizing that here. The other thing that Propello does is they don't um, they don't ask for reviews and that kind of like social experience right up front. So they save that for this second purchase. Um, so you can see at the bottom, the text says reviews are one of the first things people look at, share your experience. And then the email goes on to offer ways to leave reviews. Um, Propello Life saves that for the second purchase because they know those customers are gonna leave the most glowing and accurate reviews available to them in their customer base. So again, segmenting down to those repeat purchases, providing that custom post-purchase experience really makes a difference to your customers who say, okay, I can actually review this now because I didn't just make my first purchase, I've already tried this product. Um, I mean, how many times have you gotten the like, refer, to, refer us to a friend when you haven't even received the product yet? How do you know? Uh, why, do, why am I gonna share with my friends about this product that I don't even have? So wait until that second purchase, take the opportunity then and get those meaningful reviews. And then since we're on the topic of post-purchase, wanna separate out pre-arrival and post-arrival. Again, that re request for a referral, pre-arrival makes no sense to most people. Why am I, who, how am I gonna send a friend to try your shoes when I don't even know if the shoes are comfortable because I've never even tried them on. Um, so separating out pre-arrival, post-arrival, a customer that does this really well and is actually um, Blake already highlighted them earlier today, or Bora, shared customer between Wonderment and Clavio. Uh, they do a really great job of separating out that pre-arrival. So they talk about the subject line on this email is in your future. Um, so they're talking about like, hey, here are some recipes that you can go ahead and go shopping for the additional ingredients, get yourself ready. This gets the customer in the mindset of like, I'm ready to drink this drink. And then post arrival that this subject line is here, weird water has arrived. So it's recognizing, well, they have the data from Wonderment. So they get to say like, oh, definitely arrived today. So we can send this email. Um, and, but it's the the copy, the, the visuals, the woman holding the Ourobora, all of it is in, in recognition of where the product is in its journey to the customer. Um, so it, the, again, these are little tiny shifts, but you can go make these shifts today inside of your Klaviyo account, and it makes a huge difference for your customers. So if you are not sure where to start, at Klaviyo we call this customer first marketing. Um, it's where your customers and the experience that they have come before anything else. So while the old world of kind of batch and blast email is gone, uh, it definitely still happens. I wish it didn't, but uh, it really is dead. Our, as consumers, we're tired of it. We want customized content. We want to understand, we want our, our uh, brands that we buy from to understand who we are, what we need. Um, we want less full inboxes all the time. Everyone has way too many emails. So save your customers a ton of time and headache and uh, approach customer first marketing. So that looks like uh, doing segmentation, like we've talked about, um, looking at your customer engagement and segmenting based off of that uh, frequency, um, having a really clean, squeaky clean email and SMS list. Um, we have some ways that you can work on that because it does impact the way that you segment your list. Uh, and then thinking about your customer lifetime value, these repeat purchases over time, how do you treat them specially? How do you segment appropriately so that they, um, they feel that they matter to you? That's how you get those repeat purchases is that you show them you care and through everything that we've talked about, these uh, 10 tips and Nick has five more uh, to give you, which is like wild with throwing this much value into an hour of your life. Um, but all of these things you can go in and um, put into practice today. If you would like resources on customer force marketing, um, we do have those available to you. There's a link on that slide. Um, you can also fill out this poll that Nick threw up. Um, we would love to help you on your journey to customer first marketing and get you the you and your customers the segmentation that everyone deserves.
Awesome. Thanks, Val. Let's, uh, I'm going to just keep this running for a few moments. And I'm super excited to talk about how to get really holistic with the repeat purchase side. Um, we're going to expand out a little bit from email and wonderment while still calling right back to it because it's, it's all connected. And um, we're going to close this out in three, two, one. Thank you, folks. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and thanks to everyone for um, for playing with us on the No, I Hate Success. We were joking about how we hate those, uh, that, that like positive no answer or whatever it's called uh, when in uh, opt-ins and, you know, the X out boxes. We, we were, uh, that was our little bit of a, a joke at Marketers Everywhere. So thanks for um, playing along with us. Awesome. And um, folks, thanks for also for some of you who said you're on Clavio, but you need some help. Um, we have really enjoyed being one of Clavio's top partners. It's it's meant so much to us, and to have uh, an ESP that really understands what where where we should go with it into the segmentation and personalization and CLTV uh, modeling side. It's been really really helpful. Um, we've enjoyed it thoroughly. So I'll just quickly um, dive into who we are. You know, we're we're the first e-com agency ever. We've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, most of our clients are emerging and they need our help to take a great product and a great market and just get it in front of everyone. And that's what we do really well. And then some established brands are like, well, if you do it well for our competitors that are going to eat our lunch, you might as well do it for us as well, uh, which is fun. How do we do this? How do we get clients to grow faster than they have or faster than their competitors? It takes three disciplines. First discipline is, if we're gonna be in a channel like Clavio or Google Ads or Meta, whoever manages that part has to be a specialist in that field their entire career length. So they really know what levers to pull and what to do. And they're, they're excited about doing that. So we have all these different departments for the different channels that are really important to e-commerce. Then we have a strategy team that says, okay, Way too many pieces. How do we organize this? We got to get that CLTV up. We want to grow the business awareness, consideration, conversion. We're going to coordinate that. We're going to create segmentation across every channel, coordinate it all. That's the strategy team. And the technology team is sitting there in between with a lot of requests from the specialization and the strategy side, figuring out how to take all the platform data, bottle it up in strategic lenses. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but that's that's how you get performance. And that's what we've built for 25 years. A lot of it comes down to having this wonderful data warehouse that we built for every single client where all the data from Google Ads, Analytics, Facebook, Amazon, Clavio, all comes into one system in real time. So we've got all the data we need at our fingertips. Um, love having our partners Happy to be a Clavio part, uh, Platinum Partner. We were the first agency in Google Ads um, program ever. We're the largest ad spend managers in Google Ads. We just got chosen as Marketing Solution Partner of the Year for Big Commerce. Um, so if they're in e-com, uh, we are close partners. My name is Nick. I'm the VP of Marketing Sciences. I joined 14 years ago. Took us from a project-based business to solutions. Launched our SEO, Google Ads, Amazon, conversion and email programs, built out the teams, built out the strategy philosophy in that team, and gone from a, a wee six, six to 10 employees to, um, you know, between our data science side and our content writers and our marketers, we're over 250 in New York now. So first, we're gonna talk about CLPV. All this work for what? So that we can measure and actually drive a higher customer, customer lifetime value. Um, the LTV calculations are really complex uh, for for really no good reason. Usually, you need to calculate the TRPI and M, so customer lifetime span, how many years will a customer be a life, uh, a customer retention rate, profit margin per customer, rate of discount, which is calculating your net um, net present value. It's purely a financial concept, and then the gross margin over the lifespan of a business. People calculate these constantly. So they can run some kind of calculation like CLTV based on spend per year. It's just like spend per year multiplied by how many years they'll be a customer. What's the problem with that? 
Are customers really going to spend the same year one and year two and year three? It misses a, a huge point. The traditional CL, uh, CLTV is, I want to know the entire gross margin over a lifespan, and then you start to use something like retention rate and net present value calculations to figure out what it actually means to you today. It's ridiculous. And the problem is the actual main factor here, M, is always changing. Your M of your client, the gross margin over a lifespan is constantly changing. This is not an easy way to measure your, your business. So we've gone through a lot of different iterations trying to figure out what is a better way of doing this. And we thought monthly snapshots over time, wouldn't that be great? Like if you could look at July, 2020, and what the CLTV was in the first month of a customer being your customer, and then try a few new things, a few more uh, tweaks to your Wonderment, a few more tweaks to your Clavio, Facebook, et cetera. And all of a sudden, two years later, you're back to July, and your first month is $83 because you did the right things and you measured the short-term win. Finally, you can actually see CLTV in a way that makes sense. That was number one. Number two, utilizing your customer lists correctly. You've got your lists for email and for SMS. Well, TikTok, Meta, Google Ads, they need those lists. When we keep seeing one prospective client at a time, and then we scratch our heads, take on the client and fix it, is either they have no lists uploaded in Google Ads, Meta Ads, or TikTok, which is crazy. Why are you here? Why are you in business? If you don't want some repeat sales once in a while, or you've got the customer list, but you've got 120,000 people on your email list and the customer list size says 5,000. Oh, because it hasn't been updated in five years. You got to keep that updated as often as possible. Clavio makes it super simple. We'll talk about that. And then overlapping audiences. Go into a meta account and uh, it'll say uh, cold targeting. And then you look at the actual audiences. It's cold targeting. It includes your customer list. How did that happen? How is that even cold targeting? How do you know if any of the cold targeting is actually hitting you with the, hitting your return on ad spend? Or is it all because you happen to also sneak in your past customers? Unless you're super deliberate about your goals and your approach for cold for conversion and for loyalty, you're probably gonna let some things slip through the cracks. The first, let's just talk about what you do when, uh, when you're trying to set up these, these lists. For Google Ads, super simple. The cool thing with PMAX, Performance Max Campaign, which we've all been thrust into Performance Max now, is you can use customer lists in different ways for every single PMAX campaign, up to 100 different PMAX campaigns, uh, and you do it at the PMAX campaign level, which is, is you get to be very thoughtful. And then you can use segmentation to drive the ideal PMAX campaign segmentation. TikTok uses a really cool hashed um, data process to upload your customer list. Um, but Clavio makes it really simple to just go in, you just uh, go to your integrations, grab the Facebook integration, and then allow everything. And all of a sudden, in virtually real time, your Clavio segments are populating in Facebook in real time. It's, it's pretty amazing. There is no technology like that that I've found. It's why we turned to Clavio in the first place several years ago, and we're just excited to see everything they've built since then. But let's talk about the deliberateness of, of focusing on repeat sales. Part of the reason that people get their customer lists wrong, they put the cold and, and the customer list at the same time is because they're really not even thinking about this. Loyalty is just something that they think is mechanically driving sales, but not something to be deliberately driving. And we believe you should be thinking about that and four other activities. If you do that right, your business grows, grows, and grows. In other words, there are five activities happening in your ecosystem at any given time that marketing can, can drive. One, people finding out about you. That's awareness. They didn't search at that moment. You pushed out a message to them cold. When people search and you show up, that's consideration. Lots of activity happening there. We're getting closer to return now. You know, return on ad spend is starting to heat up. 
everyone who clicked on your website and you're trying to get them to buy through email pop-ups, through Facebook and everything. That's conversion activity. Once they bought, now you launch all your e email, SMS, Meta, TikTok, Google Ads, trying to get someone to the next level. Each of those should be tagged for the fact that they are trying to drive loyalty. And then anything where you're asking someone for a review or like a share, that's advocacy. Now, all these drive growth for your business. Actually, they, they drive this flywheel of your business. The more any one of these things heats up, the faster you are growing, almost uncontrollably fast. Nothing can stop you. But if you don't focus on the loyalty side, you're missing a big part. So what we did was we've created this uh, nice tagging system. Every campaign in Google Ads and Facebook and email and SMS that is meant to take your past customer to the next level, we tag it as loyalty. And then in one nice, neat report that is channel agnostic, we can identify how much ad spend, how much revenue is coming in the loyalty part of your business. Like, can we keep driving that higher and higher? But what's really exciting is typically you'll find that the loyalty side has like a 35% conversion rate. And if you could just drive more people into that, your business is going to grow like crazy. We call this VAC reporting. We just launched it over the last 30 to 60 days to our clients. Really excited. The next thing I'm going to go pretty quickly. Number three, use your loyalty list to accelerate SMS adoption. If someone is already on your loyalty program, get them into your SMS. Roughly 76% of those loyalty program people will go into your SMS program. If you're struggling to get a big base on your SMS side, that's your base. Just get them right now. You can convert them much faster. If you're trying to figure out your email subscribers to go to SMS, the loyalty cohort will convert at about 76% on average. Number four, if you have a good Google team that knows about all the betas out there, well, just like Amazon subscribe and save, Google now has a beta loyalty program where you can offer your product to be purchased over and over again. The easiest way to get repeat sales is to get someone to tell you they want the repeat sales on the first purchase. Yeah, Amazon has done this for a long time. And now that time has passed on the Amazon side, we understand the value of this. You know, if you do a subscribe and save on Amazon, you end up getting the highest spending, most frequent buying Amazon users of all. If you wanted to just take all the Amazon users and slice it down to the top 1%, all you have to do is set up a subscribe and save, but you've got that. That's how powerful just switching the ask, the call to action from a one time to a many time is. But we're hoping to see the same type of results on the Google beta. Last thing, if you can't get a repeat purchase from a customer, because it's not a type of product that is bought many, many times, or you know that some, some of your customers are gonna be cash strapped, if they've given you a four or five, Going back to Val's point of where we post purchase, post arrival, post arrival, post wear it, post review, and the review is solid. Now ask those individuals to uh, to to refer you. We see a 25% boost in referrals by identifying the perfect cohort. But think about it: when you get better re referrals, and better reviews, all that advocacy really drives a lot of business. So. I'm just going to close with this. Um, all of you believe in your product. All of you believe that, that um, your market loves you. If you don't think that you're growing as fast as you should, let us take our lens to your business. Um, in the first call, you'll talk to someone who's trying to understand whether your needs and your business are a fit with us. And if so, you'll start to meet with either myself or my colleague, Liam, in a step two discussion, all your challenges, who your competitors are, what does that customer journey look like, what channels should we consider based on your demographics, things like that. And then we will present to you a complete growth plan that is custom tailored to your business. If you like it, we could potentially move forward. If we need to dive in deeper into Google Ads or Klaviyo or Meta or TikTok, we'll do that as an optional step four. But we'd like to offer this uh, free to anyone. Uh, obviously our approach 
is a little different. And the great value that you get is a different perspective from an agency that's been driving growth in e-com for 25 years and knows what they're doing. So I'm gonna let this be up for uh, just a few moments here. And if uh, if it is a no, folks, no big deal. Please do just just uh, answer no. I'm gonna wait till we hit about the same threshold of voted as we had for Wonderment and Clevio, and then we just have one more way to cover for you. So I'm gonna close this out in three, two, one. Thank you, folks. And number sixteen is get to that second purchase. Um, my uh, two cents on getting to the second purchase is when someone has bought um, a product from you, uh, just one product, one purchase, the probability of them buying again is 22%. The moment they buy the second purchase, they now have jumped to 45% probability of buying from you even more. And you never get a jump like that again. It plateaus in the 50s, in the 50% range. You basically get this huge jump if all you do as a concerted effort in your business is try to figure out all the mechanics of email, transactional, SMS, meta, TikTok, Google ads, that can convince that person to buy just one more time. Your business is gonna grow so much faster. Um, Val, let's go reverse order in terms of presentation. Anything to add? No, I love how everything that we've talked about today like ties together so nicely that this is creating a very cohesive experience for everyone who's here today. I hope that the takeaway is like it's all really doable and um, and that there are small changes you can make along the way that make really big impact down the line. I think to echo off of that too, I think a theme that I kind of heard, you know, from, from both of you, I think even from some of the stuff that I was saying to you, I think it's all just about listening to your customers and making them feel heard and, and really knowing that everyone's experience is going to be slightly different with your brand. And you have to have those those nuanced approaches to really be able to capture, you know, and captivate them in a lot of ways. But it's to me, I've always thought that e-com is relationship building at the end of the day. Like people shop with you because they they value that relationship that you're having. Oftentimes they could go to the store and buy that product and get it same day, but they really want to buy for that experience because, you know, they really want to have, you know, feel connected to your brand. So I think, you know, we, per, per, I think we covered a lot of tips that I would pay good money for. So I feel like we definitely covered a lot of ground today. It was really exciting. I learned a lot myself, even too, from listening to you both. Yeah, likewise. And I, I'm like thinking back like five, 10 years ago when people used to talk about ways that you could potentially get more repeat purchases and increase and measure your life has value, all those things. And what we've just shown everyone is the technology is already been built. We're all working really hard to give you guys that power for your business. If you're not activating it, then you're really missing out on something that is not very costly. It can give you so much more growth potential and hopefully that was helpful. Thank you both for, for presenting such compelling content. I learned a ton and I don't know if we have any questions that we have not yet answered. Um, have you guys been monitoring any any questions you want to answer? By the way, a recording and a PDF copy uh, will yeah. be coming out to everyone shortly. I think uh, it looks like we kind of answered our questions along the way. It looks like we did. Awesome. Did you guys enjoy it? Uh, audience, uh, did you enjoy this? Was it helpful? Give you any new ideas to think about? Yeah, yeah Richard I'm said. Sure you need that replay uh, to go back through because it's so much information jam packed in one hour. Like Blake said, pay good money for this kind of thing. Yeah. Well, thanks, folks. Uh, starting two minutes after, ending five minutes early. Happy Wednesday. Thank you, Wonderman. Thank you, Clavio. Uh, really appreciate everything, guys. And we'll uh, we'll see everyone in two weeks on the next webinar. Always. Bye, everyone. Bye.